On this episode of The Wild Table, we head to the South Island. We are invited to a block that's been a hunting destination for generations. High Peak Station. There will be stags, roars, bucks and more deer that you can shake a stick at. And while the big antlers on the station are off limits, we'll get to hunt the block for everything else our hearts desire. What's more, we're teeing up with Sean from Food Over Fire. He's been a big supporter of our show from the start and an avid hunter himself. We'll hunt, hang out and light a cracker fire to make some epic food. Come and join us on this hearty adventure. All right, so this is a really special episode. Uh, we're right now at High Peak Station, which is, I don't even know how to describe this place. It's an amazing uh, station, farm, and it's just chock full of deer. And right now we're in the middle of the roar here in New Zealand, and there's like reds and fallow deer just going bonkers, left, right, and center. It is a spectacle just to stand here and listen to that. And we're also allowed to shoot some meat animals, so I'm fairly confident that we'll come home tonight. A little bit of meat for the barbecue. I can feel it. <laughs> no mucking around today either. Boots on, gun in hand, we start our exploration of this magnificent block straight from the hut. And it takes no time at all until we come across our first animal. There's a, a scrubby stag and a spiker just sitting right up here on the ridge. As the handlers are all uneven, so it's actually if we really wanted to, that's one animal we could take. But there's fellow deer on this block, and fellow deer are very, very, very tasty. <laughs> so I think we're gonna go with the fellow deer. But like, just to be here, to be able to see him like that. There he goes. There he goes. That's just cool. over there before and um, we spooked three fellow deer just making its way up the hill and we followed them and just crested over the other bridge and so all three of them are standing like right there probably fuck, I don't know, 30 meters from where we're sitting right now and I just went to go down to the shade and they're just standing right there so it was a little bit hectic but I think we've got two animals on back got um, definitely got one down Sean shot one, and I'm pretty sure I got the other one as well. Oh, uh, go and find out. So I reckon I was this V, this here, yeah. basically directly above that, like cabbage tree, yep. actually in line with those two cabbage trees. So, fingers crossed. Fairly certain that we've still got a good beat on those deer, so I reckon there's going to be two dead deer on ground. The animals that were shot tonight were young and tender, and taking their lives for meat made me feel fulfilled and somber in equal measure. We had an incredible day on this very special piece of land. We witnessed animals that others wait a lifetime to see, and the day couldn't have ended any better. The sun had settled well and truly by the time we made it back to the hut, and now there were really only a few things left to do. Fire, food, and telling the stories that come with that. Good morning. It is day two here at High Peak Station. Uh, we actually ended up getting three fellow deer on deck yesterday. We shot another one just in the dark, just to the, um, the side of the track there. This property is so full of deer. It's just crazy. 
And, you know, again, got up this morning and this deer just whoa, left, right and centre. <sighs> what a place, man. Stunning. So this morning, gonna have another hunt. Gonna have a little bit of a look around to see if we can pick up another meat animal and get a little bit of exciting footage of some other um, stags or bucks or anything roaring and just so much stunning stuff here to look at. Um, gonna do that, have a bit of a walk around, and just kind of see what we can find, and then we'll head back to the hut. We're gonna do some epic, epic food over fire. Fellow oh deer, hands down, my most favorite deer. They're just stunning, and I, I love the way that they roar as well. There's a fellow buck somewhere just below us, just croaking his dead zone. Let's see if we get a nice shot of him. The roar, the rut, mating season, call it what you will. This time of year, from March to April, hunters in New Zealand flock to the hills to participate in the yearly spectacle that sees red deer roaring and fallow deer croaking. Both species display impressive weapons of hard-grown antlers and unbridled behaviors that stand in direct contrast to their otherwise stealthy and elusive nature. Truly something to behold. Uh, it's about half past nine. Uh, well, I guess we're not really in hunting mode so much, eh? but we've just been walking this like stretch of road and just been observing like bucks croaking. Stop. Feel it. Don't. Right there. Damn right there. Right there. There's possibly shootable for me. Wait, see Phil. Above the yeah, yeah, yeah. See this here. <laughs> So yeah, got a bit exciting there for a minute. There's deer coming in right behind you. Um, so yeah, what, what is it, like half past nine? We've just kind of been observing, taking drone shots and stuff of kind of like just the, the rut unfolding, you know? Um, we've got meat in the freezer, so there's really no pressure to get more meat. Uh, but it's really fucking cool just to be up here and observe the spectacle that is the roar. Yeah, I think we'll keep looking probably for another maybe hour or so. And then uh, head back and make some brekkie. Yeah, start cooking. So as these things tend to go, we uh, just had, we were leaving, but being a, <coughs> being a little bit um, addicted to things, I went and had to have just one more look. I managed to find, uh, find a little, perfect little eaten sized fellow doe just grazing on the edge of the forest. <coughs> so, saddled up, got a good shot. I'm gonna go down there <coughs> and see what we can find. Right, there we go. Exactly where she dropped. Oh yeah, steep terrain. <sighs> Another really, really good um, eaten sized animal. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Really only uh, just a wee thing, but you know, the thing is, there's so many, so many um, deer on this block. They're really, these fellow deer just gotta be kept in check, and so this is, um, this is good, good population control. Anyway, I'm just gonna sort this deer out and carry it back to the top. Okie dokie, so that's the uh, deer number four, just for this little trip. And nothing to break home about, that's for sure. It's basically um, the, a, a lamb version of a deer, but it'll be super tasty. And again, you know, this is one of those blocks where we are here not to hunt big stags or bucks, but we're here for a little bit of population control and to get meat in the freezer and just to enjoy this piece of land. So that's exactly kind of what we're looking for. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna wrap that up, hang it in the chiller with the rest of the girls, and finally get in some tucker, because man, I am hungry. How about you, Sean? You hungry? Yeah, man. So, with one more fellow deer on board, we've truly filled the freezer once again. 
fellow meat being some of the finest wild meat you could possibly hope to get your hands on. The meat goes into the hanging space to join the other deer and we get settled inside for a bit. The weather does a little bit of a number on us, which is a great time to light a fire, make a brew and kick back. After all, these trips are also a great time to spend with mates. A little while later, we get to doing what we do best, lighting an outdoor fire and getting some kai on the go. And who better to be doing this with than Sean, because this live fire pit is Sean's very own love journey. Food of a fire at its best. Right, uh, so when we came back it actually started raining, which was uh, a little bit unexpected. We didn't thought this was going to be all uh, blue skies and, and dry weather. But thankfully the rain seems like it's passed, so we're going to get a bit of a cook on. Uh, we're going to make some huevos rancheros this morning over fire. Uh, Rancher's eggs for those that don't speak Spanish. <laughs> and um, a little bit of the venison of what, uh, one of the deer that we just shot. So going to be a nice cozy brekkie. And uh, I mean, look at the views, mate. Unbeatable. Camp food really doesn't get better than this. Self-harvested game, fire, smoke, great company, views to die for, and time to enjoy it all. Unfrigging beatable. So, got all the other stuff prepared. Got some beans, got some eggs, other bits and pieces. And this, obviously, is the start of the show. Some prime venison from right there. Cannot be that. Probably do a little bit more uh, salt and pasta over the top, eh? Yeah. Oh, you stopped me mid-bite. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of fat. Oh, holy. Happy days? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that will do. From over there. I love that, man. I yeah. love when you're cooking and it's like, was it from there? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. God damn. I think it's a winner. Should we breakfast? Yeah, let's do some brekkie. The camera crew must be hungry too. Double on this one. Just wrap a little bit of food mm. in it. Wow, that venison's crazy good. With the excitement and hunting done, full hearts and bellies, the only tasks left are to process the meat that we harvested. This is something we truly cherish. It feels to me as though things were meant this way. A group of hunters, a successful trip, and our very own human hands doing the tasks that see clean, wild game make it to the table. So it's all about getting the meat home, eh? And this is super cool. So there's no power, there's no power up here, but we have our vacuum seal that's being charged and ready to go. So we're bagging everything up, and then we're gonna take this in and just check it in as luggage. Thank you. And we're gonna cook some heart soon too. A special thanks for this hearty trip to High Peak Station for letting us enjoy this land and harvest what sustains us. To Sean, who chose to believe in us and keep our fire burning, and to the deer for being deer. An animal that has forever graced humanity with a dance of chase and awe and fed our species since the days of storm. We leave here fuller than we came and already look forward to the day that we might return. <laughs>